the first clip is from 2019. So this is after Cabe, uh, McCabe has been dismissed from the FBI and he is on a book tour. And I think it, it, it he's having conversation with uh, Anderson Cooper. And I think it reveals a little bit of his mindset, uh, the mindset of the people at the very top of uh, you know uh, the investigation about how they were thinking about this, how this was going to play out. So Adam, go ahead and play that clip for us. Not just one, not just two, but numerous people in and around the president, in and around the campaign, maintained contacts with individuals from Russia, people connected to the Russian intelligence services. You have a number who have been charged, a number who've been already convicted and pled guilty for all kinds of different offenses. Do you still believe the president could be a Russian asset? I think it's possible. I think that's why we started our investigation. And I'm really anxious to see where Director Mueller concludes that. And then this next clip is just from last week. So clearly mm -hmm. his, you know, his belief that Trump might have been a Russian asset in early 2019 has not been borne out whatsoever. But uh, now he's being asked on CNN about his reaction to the Durham report as someone who's named in it hundreds of times. Let's talk about it with CNN senior law enforcement analyst Andy McCabe. He's a former deputy director of the FBI. And importantly, he oversaw what became known as a crossfire hurricane probe into Trump in 2016. John Durham uh, says that you shouldn't have launched it. What's your response? John Durham is wrong. Uh, and it's not just uh, me that says that. Every other entity that's investigated um, our, our activities in 2016 agrees. And that's, of course, as you mentioned, uh, the DOJ uh, Inspector General, Michael Horowitz, uh, as well as the Senate Intelligence Committee, led, of course, uh, at the time by a Republican. Uh, uh, so this is, this report, Poppy, stands as an anomaly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Eli, what's your reaction to now CNN's uh, senior legal analyst, Andrew McCabe's uh, assertion that this is just an outlier and everyone else says that the investigation was pretty much justified? Well, huh. you know, and now uh, let's turn um, now that we're talking about the danger to children right now um, at clown parties, let's turn to our senior analyst john wayne gacy um <laughs> tell us what do you think about this new crackdown on uh child abuse and uh, are, are you serious this is I, i'm just i i i i know i should i should we know it's there but like listen yeah. let's no, first no, of we, all say we, the we've anomaly talked a lot part. about the uh revolving door from uh the intelligence agencies to yeah. keep the news on on previous streams it's uh f fairly disturbing but uh, putting that aside okay we'll the substance um, so there. first of all, we should just point out, Andrew McCabe did not elect to talk to John Durham, and yet he is here talking to CNN. So that's mm -hmm. let, so okay. If you really think you're, if you really think it's all just a big persecution, that's that's a tell. Second of all, he's wrong. It's not an anomaly. Um, Michael Horowitz's report in 2019 um, is devastating to the FBI. Um, the FBI itself, in response to the Durham report, said. We take it set very seriously, and we've already put re reforms in place, and the people who are responsible for this no longer work for us. So, I mean, I was paraphrasing there, but so yeah. so the, the FBI itself doesn't think it's an anomaly. Um, you know, and I guess the other point is that, you know, that first clip, he's making that in, you know, late February 2019, he's talking to Anderson Cooper. Uh, we would learn in a few months that the Buller team found no evidence of a Trump-Russia conspiracy. And then we would learn by the end of the year that the FBI had deceived and gamed the surveillance court, the FISA court, and that um, it wasn't an isolated incident. And, you know, we would learn all kinds of other things about this investigation. So what the hell is the former FBI di deputy director talking about when he says he thinks that the president of the United States might be a foreign agent, which is basically, I mean, you are... You are That's, uh, that is John Birch Society level totally. invective with and it's uh, you from know, the just F coming from the other direction. And it's coming yeah. from the FBI, and there was no evidence, and he knew there was no evidence for it when he was making those remarks. There was no evidence when he was like when he was fired from the FBI of that. And the 
I mean the arrogance and the fact that it's like you're pouring you're it's it's a kind of like it's some I mean listen I don't go in for the disinformation talk that everyone's talking about but if you want an example of disinformation Andrew McCabe and his interview with Anderson Cooper that's disinformation mm -hmm. and he knew better that's the thing it's like listen I forgive other analysts for saying in 2017 it looks like Trump has something to hide I thought Trump had something to hide. I, when he fired Comey in the way he did, there was a lot of information the public didn't have. So, I mean, that's, that, that happens that, you know, life, you know, there's, but the people at the FBI who are, in, who, who are running the investigation, they have far more information than us as it should be. So for them to then become like public pundits or something, and then use that their positions to create a false, kind of scandal or false crisis in American yeah. democracy, it's despicable. There, and it's unbelievable to me that he's still an analyst for CNN. How could you be some, how could you be on the, the journalism side of, the, of a news outlet as some sort of an, analyzing the news? He's, he should be the target of a hostile interview. You know, I mean, like yeah. he should, he should be like, you know, Jake Tapper should, should do his whole thing. Uh, by the way, Jake Tapper is very good on the Durham report. I should say, hmm. um, I want to credit him for that. And there's a lot of, you know, but you know, when Jake Tapper was saying, I'm, I made a new rule. We're not going to have any Republicans on. They're going to lie about the 2020 election. Okay, great. Can we have a rule? We're not going to have anybody who's going to lie about the 2017 investigation into Trump, hmm. including our, our own senior law enforcement analyst. So I, I just find it incredible that he's yeah. still an analyst. And it's, he's not the only one. I don't want to pick on Andrew McCabe. All of these people, no. it's particularly true with CNN and really MSNBC. I mean, half their roster seems to be these former yeah. creeps. Brennan. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's uh, I, I it, to rebuild their credibility. I really would like to see an editorial policy go into place that you just don't hire former Intel officials to be commentators for you it doesn't well it seems it, it, well, i i yeah. should say if 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 he's if you have on a, just a generic former senior fbi person as a news analyst mm -hmm. because i don't know we, we we there was a terrorist attack or something yeah i mean that's fine that person's going to have perspective on how investigations work it's probably going to have some old contacts it's when there is a the story is the is 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 the bad right. behavior from the right. fbi you can't then have these people on as like news analysts Hey, thanks for watching that excerpt from our conversation with Eli Lake dissecting the Durham report. You can watch that full conversation right here or another clip from the conversation right here. And tune in every Thursday at 1 p.m. for more conversations like this.